Thank you. Now, the government's been pretty busy when it comes to welfare, introducing the benefit cap, imposing tougher conditions on housing and incapacity benefits, limiting the amount benefits rise to below inflation. But the really big one, universal credit, is still to come with launch plan for October. This reform, the government hopes, is the real welfare game changer. But is it on track and will it work? Charles Dillnot has been finding out. In the most ambitious change to welfare for 60 years, the government is attempting something new. To cover the vast complexity of the lives and needs of those on benefits both in and out of work, with a simple, more flexible, cheaper to administer system that, as they put it, makes work pay. The government are taking income support, income-based job seekers allowance, income-related employment and support allowance, housing benefit, child tax credits and working tax credits, and rolling them all into one, universal credit. It gets paid monthly just so it mimics salaried work, and you get less the more you earn when you're in work. Politically, most people like the idea, it's doing it so it really works where the debate starts. Universal credit in some form rolls out nationally in October. Four areas are piloting the change, covering an estimated 7,000 claimants. But they are the least complicated cases. Single, childless, new job seekers allowance claimants who claim no other benefits. This is what modern private sector IT looks like. And IT is essential to universal credit. The Department of Work and Pensions is aiming for 80% of claims to be made online by 2017 using a new customer interface and rules engine, or in English, a new IT system. Or in fact, two. Because though it can work alone, it works best alongside another IT project called RTI, or real-time information. Which means if someone works, even for a short amount of time, it's worth their while and they remain in the system. Can government deliver IT change on this scale? Well, I, I believe they can. They're delivering an incredibly complicated benefit system already. Now the question is, will they? The Cabinet Office's own watchdog, the Major Projects Authority, looked at Universal Credit in September last year and back then graded it amber-red, which means successful delivery of the project is in doubt, with major risks or issues apparent in a number of key areas. Urgent action is needed. In May, the government responded. Significant progress has been made in the delivery of universal credit. The Pathfinder was successfully launched and we are on course to start the progressive national rollout of universal credit in October. But one Tory MP is worried. He's about to publish a book on the chequered history of large government projects. It's not an easy thing to get right. I don't pretend that it is an easy thing to get right. But the idea that the way to get it right is to stand there saying, no, everything's going absolutely fine, there really aren't any problems, it's all on time, it's all on schedule, is not something that, frankly, I believe. I've seen it too many times elsewhere. There's one common theme that runs through the tortuous history of bad software, and that's the failure to confront reality. And I'm afraid that's likely to be the case here at the moment. How are you? Right. That would be catastrophic for many currently on benefits. Quite who those people are is hard to guess. What does someone who can't afford to feed their children look and sound like? At this food bank, they supply much more than just food to those who can't cover their essential needs, like this former accountant. I'd never thought that I'd be in this predicament, but I am. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's other people out there who, who are in this um, situation but never dreamed of being in it. But the thing is, is how do you get out of it? And that's what I'm struggling on because I don't want to be in benefits. I want to go out and work. The situation that I'm in now stops me. In fact, exactly the sort of person the government designed Universal Credit to help. Um, nappies, baby food. So why doesn't she think being paid a lump sum monthly will work for people like her? What have they got to fall back on? They haven't got an overdraft because, like example of myself, I did have an overdraft and I lived off of that overdraft and it's got so bad that I can't afford to pay it back. So. Yes, you get this money, and what happens if, you know, for some reason or other, uh, you'd have to spend more than what you budgeted for for a, a week or so? Um, 
people are going to apply for crisis loans and it's just going to get worse. The government insist they'll ensure no one falls through the cracks. But despite backing some of the aims of universal credit, food banks are preparing to help more people when changes come. Last year in 2012, uh, we looked after 153,000 people whose primary reason for needing the three days of food that we give them in the food bank was that there was a problem or a mistake or a change or a delay in their benefit payments. That's the current system. We're dealing with a significant change, a change in the whole way things operate. And we anticipate large numbers of extra people coming to food banks as a consequence. That worries us. Put the mini eggs inside this bag. Good girl. The government says it will be flexible with people who might struggle to manage their money. That universal credit will roll out right, not early. Open the door for mummy, please. Good girl. But it hasn't yet convinced everybody this flagship policy is under control. Now, we would have liked to put these concerns about the implementation and implications of universal credit to a government minister. But our invitation to the department, to someone, to anyone responsible for the policy was rejected. We'll keep on asking because, as you know, we're not easily embarrassed by rebuttals and return to the subject in the weeks and months ahead. Now it's G8 time.